Are you guys ready for the hydrogen highway? I hope so. <laughs> uh, our company, H2 Technologies, was founded. We're a local company. And um, I'm not going to bust out my pigeon English today, but um, I can if need be. Uh, founded in 2008, we originally focused a lot of our work on R&D projects. We were awarded a grant through the Office of Naval Research, specifically on uh, specific uh, naval solutions, and, uh, and focused a lot on other types of technology development. However, we decided, well, one of the first reasons why we created H2 Technologies in the first place was our goal of cleaning up the roadways. In other words, like most of you as well, are in fuels. We want to green the highways. And this hydrogen highway seems so far away. People often refer to it as the fuel of the future and always will be. <laughs> and a lot of the, the argument around that is based on things like the infrastructure, the so-called chicken and the egg syndrome. If you don't build the infrastructure, the cars won't come. If the cars won't come, nobody's going to build the infrastructure. So, Based on this, we realized that one of the best ways that we can achieve that goal is to not worry about the infrastructure. In this particular project, we've teamed up with our, one of our key solutions, and that is a partner in Taiwan called Asia Pacific Fuel Cell Technologies, which I met back in 2010, and we've built up a long-term relationship, which we will jointly uh, achieve our solution. I will explain how we do that. Oh, and by the way, um, if you notice the slide, it says getting to economies of scale with aloha. Uh, for us, this aloha refers, that's dual meaning, the traditional aloha in the Hawaiian sense, but also as an acronym, it stands for an all-local, off-grid hydrogen alternative. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, I drive a Honda, I love a Honda, I've driven it for a long time, and I think Honda are pretty smart people. And uh, when I go to the, <laughs> when I go to the, uh, a lot of uh, auto shows and, um, and hydrogen events as well. This is what oftentimes Honda shows on their, on their, on their presentations. What they believe as having the, the most benefits to society, to society as the ultimate solution is the fuel cell vehicle. And that's eventually where we will be hitting to. But again, that chicken and the egg syndrome of, um, of the infrastructure. So, we believe that as we build up the hydrogen highway, we believe that this is an evolutionary process. Before the infrastructure gets built out, it's going to require different types of vehicles for that to happen. And the deployment of such vehicles will happen in certain areas and through certain projects. We believe that a smaller type of vehicle can be deployed that does not require the infrastructure and be deployed in areas like Honolulu because of its unique climate and large density of tourism. I forget to explain why. This is all a good storytelling practice for me. <laughs> the vehicle I'm talking to you about is the scooter, the motor scooter. An enormous market, 50 million units are made every year. For our business, we, we are aiming at getting to economies of scale, economies of scale with Aloha. And for, for that, economies of scale for us means 50,000 units, which is 0.1% of the annual production of scooters. When we get to our economies of scale, at that point we're able to compete head-to-head -head with the price of a gasoline motor scooter. And that's where we want to be at. One of the key reasons why we went to Taiwan to find this solution was found right in my own pocket. <laughs> and that is when it comes to making something very powerful, very thin, very light and compact, most of what you have if you're using a cell phone or, or an ultrabook, these products are all made in Taiwan. Taiwan are, have really excelled in developing these types of technologies. And so, went to Taiwan looking and of course, sure enough, found our partners. <laughs> the beauty about the light electric vehicle or the scooter is we do not need the infrastructure. That's really the key. It has a long range, the scooters that we have, and by the way, we are exhibiting the scooters. And as long as the security doesn't catch you, you actually can ride around a concourse, like some <laughs> people have done as well. So come and visit us, we're right there on the concourse area. It provides a long range for an, alt for an electric vehicle, but the, what is very unique about this technology in our partners is a unique 
a cartridge or canister swapping system, which allows us to swap out immediately in less than two minutes. And all of the hydrogen can be made from renewable energy sources, such as wind, for example. This wind farm here is maybe looking for an alternative storage. <laughs> so the fuel cell scooter, again, and this is already generation 4.6, so it's, it's well established. The technology is quite as proven and has been in operation in Taiwan for many years now. But it, it performs just like a gasoline scooter as far as its speed, its ability to climb the slope, its, its range, a 75 kilometer person can ride this for 50 miles uh, in steady. And it, and it can all be fueled by solar. So if our cost of solar, for example, is at 21 cents per kilowatt hour, that equivalent, when made into hydrogen through an electrolyzer, will be a 12 gallons of gasoline equivalent uh, hydrogen. At which point, based on the efficiency of the, of the, uh, the unit, the cost per mile is just one point four cents. So, pretty inexpensive method of travel. Uh, and to prove that the durability is also there as well, thirty of these units are being used by the as a fleet vehicle for the Taiwanese government, and they have logged over one hundred twenty thousand kilometers of use already. So, the durability is well proven. So, here's how we foresee how an individual can go completely off grid. When we mean off grid, we're not just talking about electricity. We've been dealing here yourself from the gasoline station as well. A one kilowatt photovoltaic panel with five hours of sunshine, in other words, five kilowatt hours, is all you need to make the hydrogen necessary, which is 100 grams, to take that scooter for its 50 mile range, for full range. The unique metal hydride cartridge canisters makes, gives the flexibility. We also have the power generator, which is a fuel cell, stationary fuel cell. Everything that, that we use, either a scooter or the, or the fuel cell, uses the same cartridge. So the flexibility, my time is up here, is, uh, is very good. So again, Honolulu, an ideal launch pad because of its, of its density. And also our desire to keep Hawaii clean and pristine is really another driver for that. Uh, we do have uh, discussions. We're in NDA, so I can't discuss is tell you who they are, but we are in discussion with a major fuel retailer for our distribution of the canister swapping system, as well as um, uh, rental companies for both the scooters and auto also auto vehicle companies. So, what we're going to be doing, our plan as the project here and the project finance we're looking for, is the world's first commercial, non-governmental, that is, uh, renewable hydrogen scooter rental program. We will have 20 of these zero emission scooters, eight. Uh, canister locations, we'll, we'll have 200 in total canisters out. We need to raise 1.5 million, million for the capital investment and the startup costs and the operation costs for this. We plan on renting these out at about $39.5 per day and $6 for the canisters itself, which is fully, fully fueled, that is, uh, making an annual net income of about $200,000 a year. tell you it's a great price point because that's what it costs to rent a bicycle in New York City. <laughs> Thank goodness I'm not riding a bicycle in New York City. I buy my own in that case. How much would it cost the person to be able to operate with this and You can. That's the ultimate goal. Is, is Once we get to economies of scale, the whole system will cost less than $10,000. In other words, not, not including the affordable take panels, but just the hydrogen portion. Scooter, the electrolyzer, which, which is used to split the water into hydrogen and oxygen. The canister recharge system, which absorbs the hydrogen into the canister. And the fuel cell scooter itself. How long do they some larger vehicles? Like larger vehicles like in... Um, like like a normal car. <laughs> yeah, normal cars. See, that's the chicken and the egg. Um, well, they're going to come out. You see, the, there's already all, all of the automobile manufacturers have said that they're going to be launching their vehicles in 2015. Honda, GM Motors, Daimler has already built their uh, their plant in, in uh, British Columbia for their fuel cell vehicles. So it's going to happen, and they are likely going to launch them in 2015. For for, for those vehicles, and you really need an infrastructure built up, and this is just a bridge towards that as well. So. 
we hope to be a part of that play as well. Thank you very much. Our next presenter 